everybody. Well, I got a couple of old engine mounts here. Uh, this one is from a 1991 Jeep Wrangler YJ. And this one is from a 1995 Jeep Cherokee XJ. So the reason I saved these engine mounts, even though they're both damaged, is so that we can take a look at them and examine what the failure mode of the engine mount is. So that when you're looking to inspect motor mounts on a Jeep, you can see where they fail and you'll know what to look for during an inspection. Both of these mounts failed in similar ways. But before we talk about that, let's look at how these mounts are installed in the Jeep in the first place. So if you were looking at the Jeep from the passenger side, you'd see a mount installed in this direction, where this bolt hole here and this stud are mounted down onto the body frame. And the engine is attached to this mount through this steel tube right here. That way, this outer steel shell is fixed to the body, this inner tube is fixed to the engine, and this rubber mount sits in between them to isolate engine vibration from the body. And since the engine is doing most of the moving, it's this part right here that takes the most stress, and that's where the failure occurs. Now this is a driver's side mount, which is installed in a similar fashion. And while this one has not ripped apart completely, you can see there's quite a bit of cracking along the steel tube. This outer steel shell is really just sitting there. And the way they secure it is by simply bending over this tab. So I'm gonna bend this back straight and take this shell off so we can see down on the top part of the mount. have to get enough bend on this bottom so that it'll slide out. Looks like the problem is because of this deep groove that's pressed into this outer sleeve is also in the rubber, which makes it even harder to get this apart. Wow, look at that. That's pretty interesting. I never thought they would have such a deep groove in between each side of the mount like that. At first I thought this bend in the top of the mount may be just to have a little bit of extra firm hold on the top of the mount. I never actually thought they'd run a big deep groove like that. But I guess that's molded into the mount to help control this direction of movement from the engine while this archway helps to control this direction. Pretty interesting. And just for the heck of it, and now that I know how to do it, let's take this one apart too to see if there's any differences between these two mounts. Looks like this is gonna come apart a lot easier. There we go. Well, there's definitely a difference in the rubber mold on this mount. Even though the part numbers for the left and right side mounts are both the same. So the difference could be the manufacturer that was used. I mean, after all, one of these is a 95 and the other one is a 91. That may also be the difference in the failure mode as well, since this one completely ripped apart and this one only started to. There's even a slight difference in these top mounting plates. The groove on this one is much deeper than this one is. Although the slots appear to be the same, as does the front mounting hole. Even the width is the same. So really it looks like the big difference between these two mounts is the depth of this groove here compared to the depth of this groove here, along with the molding characteristics of the rubber portion of the mount.
one thing I would like to have seen is some manufacturer's identification marks. Because if I had my choice for an aftermarket replacement, it would be this mount right here since it hasn't completely failed after all those miles. So there you have it. Jeep motor mount failure modes. Pretty cool. Well, if you have any questions or any comments, post them below. And thanks for watching. And if you like my videos, please subscribe.